All right, guys, it is time to talk about a movie that I've wanted to talk about since the day I started this channel. In fact, this movie has a review, and I'm going to mention it a few times on this for sure. There is my favorite video on YouTube is Good Bad Flicks breakdown of Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. Um, I watched that video because I've always been a big fan. Yes, guys, this is going to be a positive review for Book of Shadows, okay? So you go ahead and click that dislike button, go next, don't listen to anything else. If you hate this movie like everyone else, that's fine. Um, but this is my opinion, so if you're going to listen, this is my fucking opinion. I think this movie's awesome. Anyways, I watched his breakdown of this movie, which he also thinks this is a really cool movie. Uh, it got fucked with with the studio. I'm not going to disagree that there's stupid stuff in this, but it was all added after the fact. And all that stuff hurts the film a lot. I pray one of my most desired fucking things ever is a director's cut of this film. I want to see the original vision of this movie because what I've heard and what he, if, if you haven't seen Good Bad Flicks breakdown of Blair Witch 2, absolutely go do it. I feel like that's the best video that's ever going to be on this movie. And I, this is one of the big reasons I never did this video is because I'm like, I don't know what else I can say that wasn't said in that video. Like it pretty much, outside of like all the background stuff, which I didn't really know, um, everything else he said about the movie that was positive, I was like, yep, that's what I wanted to say. Yep, I feel that. I agree with this. I agree with, like, everything's in there. So if you want to see an amazing fucking Blair Witch 2 review, please, I will leave a link in the description below. Click on that shit. It's incredible. Anyways, um, and please, if you can, if you're someone who's savvy with this kind of stuff, if you know how to, like, let's start a petition to get that director's cut. I know a lot of people wouldn't want it, but maybe if a director's cut was released and it started to generate some buzz, like, wow, this is actually a much better film. A lot more people would pick it up and be like, holy shit, why isn't this the movie that they released? Or there would still be a lot of people who just want to hate it because either they don't really honestly like it or because... They're being stubborn and they don't want to admit they were wrong. I do not know. Now, the main theme of this movie is just mass hysteria, which is exactly what the Blair Witch Project spawned. It spawned mass hysteria. And another thing that's really cool about this movie, and I think the big reason why people didn't like this movie, I'm not saying this is the only reason, I just think it's a big one. People don't really like change. They really don't. They say they do. They want a fucking brand new idea and they don't want it to be exactly the same, but they really do. And I've used examples in the past many times and I'm not going to do them again. I don't care. This is my example. Blair Witch 2 is my example. Like, they're like, oh my God, this had nothing to do with the Blair Witch and what the fuck is this and that. And just like he says in Good Bad Flicks, like, this has everything to do with the Blair Witch. This gets it exactly. It's playing off of the fucking craziness that this spawned and, and the effect that it had on people. And, and, you know, it was kind of an interesting case study of mass hysteria. And I love that they went this angle. I, just grabbing a camera, a couple handheld cameras and putting a bunch of people found footage style back into the woods. Is that really what you wanted? I mean, that's what you got with the third one, the, the most recent one, which I like okay, love the ending, the rest of the movie's okay, we'll get to that. But that's not what I, like, would I have sat there and watched that movie? Sure, and that's what I absolutely expected when I saw this movie. But when I saw, when I saw that they changed it up, that this was a reenactment of events that supposedly happened, which obviously didn't, but... I was excited. I was like, all right, we're doing something different. And it was playing more of a psychological angle. And it was also like questioning its roots. Like, as I said, God, he says so much of this. I don't know what else to say that he hasn't said. But let's talk about the movie itself. This is such a misunderstood movie. Um, so Jeffrey Donovan here from Burn Notice um, is, is here. And I think he's fucking great. So I knew that this guy was going to go off and do something. We also got Erica Lershin however you say her name, who plays the Wiccan girl here. She was in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. She was the tennis instructor or whatever in The Sopranos. She, she's she been in a few things. She's had some, some pretty good success since this. I thought she was great in Texas Chainsaw because that remake is one of my favorites ever. Um, and uh, Kim Director. I mean, who didn't have a crush 
on the goth chick as everyone refers to her as in Book of Shadows. She's so fucking cute. <laughs> and I also like uh, Tristan and Steven a lot as well. I think I think Tristan's pretty as well. So all the chicks in this are pretty hot. Um, well, all the main three, not like the townspeople chicks. Those chicks are horrible. But um, yeah, some good looking ladies. And I think the performances from Steven and uh, Jeff are, are great, especially at the end. I think, uh, spoilers, obviously. I think that the breakdowns by Kim, Jeff, and Steven are excellent, especially Steven. The way he delivers all those lines is fucking bullshit. Like he's spitting and all that. He's so, but we're going to save that for the end. Um, even though I already said most of what I wanted to say, but, um, also another thing, uh, is this movie had the curse of Esper. I remember when that was happening, that they were talking about, um, the prize that you could win and all that, but that's explored. He explains all of that in good, bad flicks. I'm sorry to keep pushing you off onto that thing, but I don't have, his video is like 18 minutes and he's got amazing clips and everything. So I'm just going to talk about the film and my feelings towards it. Um, this is the first tour, the inaugural tour of the Blair Witch Hunt. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, he's never done this before because this is only going to happen once, right? Anyone who tries to go out into those woods, big mistake. Kim is a psychic in this as she's sitting on Treacle's grave there, Eileen Treacle. Uh, it also says further for a second, which is part of the Essever thing. Um, they go to the Rustin Parr ruins where the uh, Blair Witch tapes were found. Heather's, Heather, Josh, and Mike's tapes were found. Um, and they, uh, they, have the, they have Erica, who is playing a Wiccan. Now, I dated a Wiccan for about three years of my life. Uh, very peaceful girl, really. Like they, it's a cool, uh, I, I don't want to call it a religion. I don't know what the fuck to call it. They're just whatever they are. They're into the earth, uh, which is good. I mean, I'm all about that. Hell yeah. That's, we need more of that in the world. Um, but yeah, I, I can only imagine that people like this, because every one of their characters represents a different side of the coin when it came to the audience that was uh, out there with this movie. You've got the skeptics and Tristan and Steven, and you've got the guy who's capitalizing on everything and making money off of it, like Jeff. You've got the um, outsiders who thought it was cool, like Kim. And then you've got the... Uh, the people who were Wiccans, they were people who considered themselves witches or whatever, and they're just like, great, more negativity, more bad press against witches to make us look like we're fucking crazy and that we sacrifice children and, and goats and drink blood and whatever. Which I can tell you, I was with that chick for three years and she was the sweetest chick you ever fucking met in your life. Wouldn't hurt a fucking fly, literally. Um, probably where I got a lot of my stuff from. Um, they, they, they definitely don't make a big deal about a certain amount of things in this though. It kind of irritates me. So I think even a director's kind of be like, why is that not like the fact that Jeff comes and there's a tree that's growing straight up through Rustin Parr's remains and he's been there enough. Like this is what he does for a living. How is he not finding that to be way crazier than he does? And then later when they're watching the footage, they see that it's just a little twig. Now it's this little baby tree. And he's like, see guys, I told you something was up with that tree. That's it? Like, I think everyone in that room should be like, oh shit, something crazy is going on here. I know they're already already agitated and they're kind of losing it and whatever, but that would be such a big deal. Could you imagine the tree this wide, out of frame, but like this wide, and then you look at footage and it's this big? There's no disputing that. There's no arguments. There's no anything. That would be mind fuck. That would just be like, what the fuck? Like, you would immediately be like, okay, everything's wrong. Oh, like, I don't know. They just don't react to it at all. And it, it's always irritated me. Anyway, so he brings a ton of cameras so that he can um, film this, get anything he can on film. Um, and we find out that Ellie Kedward was tied to a tree and left for dead, which plays into the third movie on how they made her look. We'll stay that for later. I really like the banter yet again um, between the characters. I like how they play off of each other. I like the uh, dialogue. I like uh, Tristan and Steven's relationship. I like um, Jeff and, and Erica's 
uh, flirting kind of on and off there. I like the way Kim interacts with everybody. Uh, I like Kim and Tristan's interactions when she's talking about her having the baby and how she doesn't want it, but Je Steven does and all these kinds. Like, I don't know. There's a lot of really good dialogue going on, and I thought that um, most of the acting is actually pretty good. Um, there's rough moments for sure, but overall, I, I think they're all pretty good. I know that, as I said, I think there's moments that are just uneven, but outside of that, I, I do think the uh, the acting is, is really good. Um, I also find it really funny that Jeff really needs to think about his business here because he uh, doesn't seem to have a very good business model by bringing people out into the woods, smoking pot with them, drinking a ton with them, and trying to hit on and fuck them. Like, Jeff, you are not going to have a business very long if you're trying to get everyone stoned and you're trying to get laid. Like, you are, you are talking about a lawsuit waiting to happen. You're talking about rape charges. You're talking about sexual harassment. You're talking about... <laughs> this guy does not know how to run a business. But then again, he seems to be... Uh, he has a um, very questionable business that he's running online with all the stuff that he has in his house. So... He, uh, and he was in a mental institution. There's so much added dumb shit in this. Like all the murder scenes that are spliced in throughout this. Josh in the mental institution, or uh, Jeff in the mental institution. Like, I'm going back to the first one with Josh. Um, it's all so dumb. It's all shoehorned in. You can tell that it's meddling. You can tell that it is studio bullshit. This movie was a slow breakdown of everyone's minds to the end where they find out they were actually doing this all along. Like, that would... Oh, God, this movie is so good. It could have been amazing, but they had to fuck with it and put a bunch of horror shit. Let's add murder and blood and guts. Like, I'm usually all for that. But this film didn't need it. One time you'll hear me say that. They fucked up by adding bullshit. <sighs> So the tour dude, uh, I, I do like the line where uh, Tristan and Steven are going on about um, perception being reality. And they're fighting back and forth and, you know, they're using big words. I think you're a mon mono maniacal reductionist or something like that. Or, like, I didn't even know what the fuck that meant when I heard it the first time. I was like, huh? I still don't. Actually, I know what the reductionist part is, but uh, the first one, I was like, what the fuck is that? Uh I guess I'm not a well-read man. Um, then the tour group comes and that whole like them killing the tourists and all that. All that shit is stupid. That shouldn't have been added in. But it, the whole point of the tourist being there is that it's trying to show that the film had hit on a global scale. Like that it had hit Germany and that it had hit uh, Asia. I don't know. They were Japanese or Chinese. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm a racist. They all look the same. No, they don't all look the same. I just couldn't tell you. I would think those people would be Japanese. I'll probably get fucking shit for that, but whatever. Um, where am I? Uh, I really like the soundtrack in this movie a lot. A lot of the music's good as well. Um, the Disposable Teen song by Marilyn Manson, although I do like that song. I was a big Marilyn Manson fan when I was in high school. Uh, he has some amazing albums. Um, the original song was supposed to be Witchcraft by Frank Sinatra. Um, and I think that would have just given a much better tone to begin with because it's supposed to kind of start lighthearted and then work its way into this like um, darker kind of film. Um, but outside of that, I, I uh, just because I knew that was going to be there, I don't mind it. I think it's cool because I like that. I don't like that they're adding in and splicing in all the murder and all that. It's stupid. But outside of that, like I, I like the song, so it sets a good tone. And then the rest of the album... Uh, soundtrack is rocky um which is great not rocky like not good like rock and roll rocky um which i like a lot i mean rock's my my genre so um and then the score which the score i guess is comprised of some like the guy who did the score for this he went out and like broke branches and like threw rocks and all sorts of like sounds that he made out in the woods and recorded them and then went back into the studio and distorted them to make them into musical sounds and then played the music like that. That's why it's so weird sounding. I love it. It gets such a great atmosphere to the film. 
Um, and Kim says that they, that the tour group that they just told to fuck off is not coming back. She's psychic. So she kind of had a little bit of intuition knowing that they were never going to see them again. I don't think she knew that they were going to die, but she was told in her psychic mind, which clearly she has one, um, that they were not going to survive. Um, then Tristan has a dream of killing her baby and wakes up and has a miscarriage. Um, they wake up. I really like the shot when they wake up and they find all of uh, Tristan and uh, Steven's notes are just flying like snow all over the place. Like it's just pouring paper snow. I think that's a really cool shot. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, and they're just freaking out, like, what the fuck happened? Where the hell did the last five hours of our life go? And then Kim's like, I could see the tapes in my mind, which anyone would question is bullshit. And they go and they stick their hand down and they find the tapes. And I think at that point they would have been stringing Kim up like, you did this shit. How would you know? Psychics aren't real. Get the fuck over here right now. You're telling us. You know what's going on. <laughs> Then, yeah, she has her miscarriage. They take her to the hospital. She looks and she sees that creepy girl walking backwards because backwards is another huge theme in this movie. The Essiver um, curse thing, the curse of Essiver is all reverse stuff. Um, they have to play the tapes in reverse. Uh, Tristan's uh, backwards. All the characters are walking in reverse when they're dead. Like, this movie has a lot of reverse in it, and Essiver is reverse in reverse. Um, and. Let's see, where the hell am I? Uh, I like Jeff's dog bark alarm and that he bought a factory for $1. Man, I need that deal. I wonder what the upkeep on that place is or if it's just falling apart. Like if they're going to demolition in it, don't you think that they were demolitioning it for a reason? Um, but no, they sold it to him for a buck, which is exactly how the Halloween house was acquired, right? The guy was uh, supposedly, as the myth goes, not myth, but as the story goes, the guy saw the Michael Myers house about to be demolished as they were knocking every house down the block. It was the only house left standing, and he ran out in front of the bulldozers, talked the foreman into selling it to him for a dollar, but he had to get rid of it in one day and put it on the train tracks, and there it sits to this day. So I guess it's somewhat believable. If that guy can do it with the Michael Myers house, which is iconic as fuck, uh, Jeff could get a place like this for a buck, right? Why not? Um, and so they go through the footage. It shows Erica swinging around the tree in the nude. So we get to see some boobies, even though she doesn't really have any, uh, which isn't a bad thing. I like all shapes and sizes. Um, I'm an equal opportunity employer. Um, we get the I'm finished now line, the rust and par line from the repairman on the fridge who's been down there for a long time. I mean... He must have came back because <laughs> he's down there for like two days. Uh, so this guy's slow. Full day at least, anyways. Um, day and a half. All right. Doesn't matter. Um, and then freaking, <laughs> then, then Kim goes out to get beer, wicked ale, and she ends up having an altercation with Peggy, which we find out at the end that she killed her. But in her version, in her mind, as she saw it, she just pushed her and grabbed her by the throat. And then she took the nail file home, which I like how they make her poke herself with it first. So you think the blood on the uh, thing is hers. I think anyone figured out that she killed her, though. That's, I think that's pretty obvious. Um, but as she's driving back, she sees seven kids in the road that she believes to be the kids that were killed by Russ and Parr. And she hits a tree very softly and then drives it back. And then when they look later, the tree is, com or the uh, tree, the van is completely smashed in and she swears up and down. It couldn't have been. And I 100% would have believed her. There's no way she could have driven that home. Not a chance. There's no tree around for her to smash it into like that. How could she have pushed it there? There's no fucking way. So that would be terrifying. Um, I do like how badass Kim is in that scene with Peggy where she's just like, bitch, I am getting beer and you are giving it to me. I will put it in a bag and I will throw the fucking money at you and I'll try to strangle your ass if you get in my way of my alcohol. I need this right now. You don't understand the night and day I've had. America goes missing and they find her clothes just laid out with a bunch of fucking candles around it, which you would think is like a Wiccan thing. Who knows? She's doing fucking all sorts of 
spells and stuff evil intent in the ground may a release soon be found blessed be i remember i used to know all those lines because i watched this movie like every night for like two months straight when i lived out in the woods yeah i lived out in the woods and i was really crazy about this movie and every night before i bed i threw it on for like two straight months i was all about this movie at one point so yeah i'm a huge fan um, then they call the Episcopal, whatever how they'll fucking say that name, Episcopal priest over in wherever the hell she says, the one church town, and they're like, they never had kids. And he's like, yeah, no, she disowned her. And like, no, they never had a child. So I don't know why Erica lied about her parents. Um, she just made it up. I don't know. Maybe it was her, I don't know. I don't know. That never explained why she lied about that. But that adds to um, their distrust of her and like, oh my God, she isn't who she says she is. Let's blame her. Um, I love the way Jeff answers his phone in this when they're all like, you know, uh, trying to figure out what's going on and Cravens is calling and he answers the phone. And he's like, fuck off. No one's home. I've answered my phone like that. I used to answer my phone like that a ton. On when I was watching this movie. I thought it was hilarious. I also used to answer my phone, Thrill Me, from uh, Night of the Creeps, and a few other things. Uh, Leave a Message After the Scream. You know what movie that's from? I put that on my uh, mail, my message, my uh, voicemail box at Once Upon a Time. May. Anybody seen May? Leave a Message After the Scream. Ah! Love that. I love messages and hanging and answering the phone in certain ways from movies. Um, I had another one too, but anyways, let's stay on track here. Where are we? Um, and yeah, then Erica's outside. No one can see her, but then Tristan asks Stephen to look again. He looks again. She's out there in the naked, in the nude, in the naked, in the naked. And she has her hair covering her tits, which as a hairdresser, I get asked for that a lot, a lot. I'm like, how long do you want your hair? They're like, I want my hair to cover my tits. Like if I'm naked, I want my hair to just cover my nipples. They're like, I just want to, I just want to have hair like that. I don't that gets, that gets told to me a lot. I don't know if it's just because they want to tell me about their tits or that's a real desired effect, but, or uh, something that they really want. I don't know, but <laughs> I get told it a good amount, like a lot, a lot. Um, and the, then, the uh, Kim finds Jeff's police files on them, which end up later being their actual police files that are in the station. So it's like this shared delusion, this mass hysteria of stuff that they are actually going to see later. So maybe they created some of these events while they were in there in that chair, who knows, because those police files weren't actually in Jeff's house, they were actually in the police station. Or maybe they were manifestations of the future that Kim was able to pull out with her mind because she's psychic. I'm going way off track here with crazy random theories, but hey, why not? <sighs> um. And then the uh, bridge breaks as Stephen is trying to cross it to talk to Erica. Uh, and then Cravens is at the door, which he actually isn't. And Jeff goes and opens the door because he sees on the video monitors that the bridge is still intact. Then he opens it and it's broken again. And there's actual dogs barking out there, which he could have filled in with his mind because he hears the barking and he's so uh, crazy at that moment and scared and he's susceptible and maybe they're tripping. I don't know. Maybe there's some drugs out there in the woods. <laughs> and they're still in it. I don't know. Um, and because that's just it, right? This is a reenactment. And maybe, like, supposedly, these people are telling their stories, and these are just actors replaying the stories that those cops were taking from those people. And then they're saying that maybe Kim's saying that those files that they're looking at were actually in Jeff's drawer. So that would kind of make sense, right? If this is a reenactment, that would explain away like how they supposedly have the file. She's just saying the files that she looked at when the cops were there, she's filling them into the story she's telling for them to reenact. Wow. Wow. I am, yeah. I love this movie, so it's fun to fucking break it down. It's fun to go crazy with theories. Um, and then they find uh, Erica dead in the closet. Who, who she's just standing there. Yeah, dead bodies just stand up and, and, and you can just twist them around and they'll still be standing. 
It's just stupid, but whatever. She's dead in the closet. Uh, hair's still covering her titties. <laughs> and uh, Jeff in that scene, all these scenes, I think Jeff's so great. He's such a good actor, I think. Um, but then they figure out that they need to tape, play the tape backwards. And when they do, they see what they've done. They smash their own shit. And when it comes back to it, Erica, or Erica, I'm sorry, Tristan is backwards. She's also backwards. So she's not even watching the footage because she probably knows what's on there. But I like that she's in reverse. The footage is being played in reverse. She told them to play it in reverse. Uh, they're really sticking to those themes. Um, and then when, in the footage, I thought it was interesting because Jeff is shown upside down holding the camera screaming. Is he being carried by the Blair Witch? Is, is, does Tristan have powers? Um, there's also kind of like an homage to Return of the Living Dead, I want to say here, with Trasha's scene where she's riding the skull, the, blocking her vagina. Doesn't that happen? She does like the dance, but isn't there an also scene? Or have I made that up? I think that's there. Just watch that fucking movie. Maybe I'm just thinking it's that. Please remind me if I'm right on that. Uh, I think it is, though. Ooh, I don't know. Um, and then... Tristan does an homage to Heather Donahue at the end of the footage that they're watching by putting the camera all close like I did in the opening of my Blair Witch review. Um, I thought that was cool. Um, and then the Tristan footage that we see and what they remember is drastically different than what they remember also the same with um, Erica's death and with Peggy's death from Kim. Um, and then uh, when the cops come to get them, uh, the bridge is not broken yet again, and the van is not wrecked. So they imagine all of this, which could you imagine? I mean, I'll say that could you imagine until the end. Um, and then the footage is shown to them. And as I said, I think the acting in this is great, but like the coldest line, my favorite line, because it's so brutally cold man it is like the frozen tundra it's so cold is when jeff pushes her off in the in the tape we see like the real footage that the cops are showing them because in uh because in our version of it like she's being like you're a pussy you don't have the balls you're the last fucking person to have balls to push me you won't do it you pussy all this and he's just like no and he shoves her because she's taunting him but then the footage that we see that really happened She's begging for her life. Please, Jeff, please, Stephen, please. I love you, all this. Which, oh my God, how hard would that be for him to watch? Like, I murdered her when she was begging for her life. But then he pushes her off, and it's like such a gnarly scene of watching. I don't know why hanging scenes are so brutal to me when they're done right. Like the one in The Omen, and there's a lot of them. The one in Suspiria, and I like when they just, they go down, the bodies just snap. It, there's something so vicious about that kind of kill to me and it always works so good but like she's begging for her life and then he pushes her her neck snaps all brutal and then she he just looks at the camera and is like fucking witch i don't know why that line is fucking so emotion like so fucked up it's so mad i don't know it really the first time i heard it I like coughed out loud like <gasps> I just did, it, it was, it was some dark shit. Um, and yeah, Stephen freaking is freaking out. Uh, I thought that was excellent. Like uh, Jeff kind of being like, that's not how, what happened. And he's like crying. And then Kim, like she's, her makeup's all fucked up. And she's just like, what is this? That's not what happened. Like, I don't know. I think, I think all their performances at the end. And then it's just grim, man. It just like leaves off like, nope, they're the murderers. Um, they saw her like, don't go out in the Burkittsville woods, man. Don't go out there because uh, they can fuck with your mind. They can make you see things that aren't there. They can make you do things you don't want to do. They can fuck with footage. They can fuck with like, everything. So that's it. The Blair Witch 2. Book of Shadows. I always have to mention, too, that there is no Book of Shadows in this movie. Who the fuck came up with that title? Book of Shadows. What does that mean? There is no book of shadows in this movie. There's nothing that even remotely comes to the book of shadows. What? That is, that is fucking 
Studio interference, bullshit, right there. Why? Why is that even on here? Why isn't it just Blair Witch 2 or the Blair Witch Project Part 2 or whatever? Book of Shadows. So annoying. Anyway, um, so there you go, guys. A positive review for Blair Witch 2 actually exists online now outside of maybe two or three others. So it'll be one of the only ones online. So um, for those of you who hate it and actually sat through this, thank you for at least giving me a little um, chance to try to prove my case for why I think this movie is arguably the most under... Um, not underrated, you know I hate that word, or even underappreciated, but misunderstood sequel ever. Like horror sequel for sure. I think this is a, a fantastic spin on a sequel. Instead of just doing a copy-paste, repeat kind of thing, they actually tried something new. And I think it worked really well. I think that if they didn't have the studio interference, we would have gotten a much different response. I think we would be a lot more people who like it. So director's cut, please, please make that happen. There's, there's a few things I want more than anything on Blu-ray, a director's cut. I'll take it on DVD. I'll take it on VHS. I don't care. I want that. I want the three hour cut of night, uh, needful things with all the R rated footage cut back into it. The TNT version. Um, I want a uncut version of Patrick Still Lives that isn't a hundred fucking dollars. There's some ones I want, but Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2, and I want them to get rid of Book of Shadows when they release the director's cut. I want it to just be called Blair Witch 2 Director's Cut. Make that happen. I mean, if they have to keep the Book of Shadows on there, I really don't care as long as I get this movie. Um, all right, I'm done. So, yeah, guys, that was fun. Um, that's It's weird because... I started this channel over a year ago and I've been wanting to do this fucking video for so long. It's weird now that I've done it. So, but that's it. Maybe the audio didn't record and I'll get to redo it. I don't want to do that, please. <laughs> All right, guys. Good night.